Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to an unscheduled live stream by Crime Time with Duty Ron. This is breaking news. 60 additional charges filed by the Kissimmee Police Department against Stefan Stearns. 60 additional charges as it pertains to the child abuse, the child rape of Madeline Soto. This is disturbing news, and I'm going to go right to the news report for you guys to listen to what these new charges that are levied against Stefan Stearns. This afternoon, new charges have been filed against Stefan Stearns. He is the lead suspect in the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, whose body was found earlier this month. Meredith McDonough is here to explain that these new charges are not connected to Madeline's murder. Sheldon, not murder, but still a total of 60 new charges have been filed against Stearns in connection with the death of Madeline Soto, who was found dead after being reported missing. Now, the new charges include eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18 years old, and then seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation and 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Now I'm going to stop it right there, friends, and I want to put myself back on the screen. These are 60 new charges as it pertains to his cellular device and perhaps his computers, his laptops, his uh, desktop computer, if he had one, any type of electronic devices. It's not just his cell phone. This is a cumulative, uh, accumulating uh, charges of all of his electronic devices. Now, there was two charges that he was initially charged with, and I have them written down here, sexual battery and possession of material of a sexual um, sexual nature performed by a child on his phone. So there was these two main charges that he was charged with on his initial arrest, and that arrest was just seven days ago, just, well, actually six days ago. He was arrested, I believe, last Wednesday. So it's Tuesday. Yeah, we got six days. Uh, I'm homesick from work. I'm not feeling well, but I'm actually monitoring this case closely. And as soon as this came across the wire, I wanted to bring it live to you guys as we see this developing. This is not surprising to me because they, they said that there was going to be more charges. What we're all saying and thinking is, where are the murder charges? When are these murder charges going to come forward? And folks, they won't come forward until they dot their I's and cross their T's and make sure that every single part of Madeline's murder can be brought forward and proved beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. So we have to be patient, but just understand this. These charges alone levied against him, if they stand, which they will, because these are things that are on, present on his computers, cellular devices, electronic devices, these charges alone, he will never see the light of day, even if he doesn't get charged with a murder, which we know he will. So let me let the rest of this play for you guys. My voice is down and I'm having a hard time with even communicate with you guys, but we're going to continue with this. I'm going to put it back so you guys can hear it a little bit better. It was found dead after being reported missing. Now, the new charges include eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18 years old, and then seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation and 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. This guy's a now, demon. shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stefan Stern's phone. He was then arrested on sexual battery charges along with possession of child sexual abuse material. According to officials, further investigation then revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. And this is from where the new charges stem. According to those documents obtained by West Two News, Stearns was abusing Madeline for nearly two years. Now, Madeline was missing for nearly a week before her body was found. In a wooded now, I want to remind you that the arrest warrant, um, I'm going to bring myself back on, the arrest warrant that we read out to you guys, and again, it was brutal in details, but it's important that we all understand the severity of the charges and the demonic, monstrous behavior, the sexual deviant, this pedophile right here, Stephen Stearns, we wanted to 
let you guys know that this, this man right here is the face of evil. When you look up demon in the dictionary or in, in, in you look it up in the encyclopedia, this is what it shows. This guy is a demon. Um, he was sexually abusing her documented on paper as per his cellular and electronic devices from March of 2022 going right up until December of 2023. And that in my in my eyes, my friends, are is is the face of evil and is this this guy's a demon. Um I'm gonna let this play just a little bit more so you guys can listen and then we'll chime back in. But the big question that I'm asking each of you right here and right now is what's going on with the mom, Jennifer Soto. She's lawyered up, she's clammed up, she hasn't said a word, obviously because she knows that the heat is on her. By a show of hands in the chat, if you feel that we uh, will be seeing forthcoming, and I'm going to press a one myself right now, if you feel that charges are forthcoming for Jennifer and the mom, press a one in the chat. If you don't think that there's enough, press a two. If you think she's completely not involved in any of this and is in complete innocence, press a three. I don't expect to see many number threes, but my vote is number one right now depicting criminal acts, and this is from where the new charges stem. According to those documents obtained by West 2 News, Stearns was abusing Madeline for nearly two years. Now, Madeline was missing for nearly a week before her body was found in a wooded area in St. Cloud. St. Cloud. Now, again, Stearns is a suspect in her death, but not currently charged with her murder. We'll continue to follow this breaking update. Shall so that's what's got everybody in a tizzy. Why? Why are they taking so long with the murder charges? Well, it is not as easy as what we would think. Now, I'm going to go to the Twitter feed of the Kissimmee Police Department in Florida, and I want to play. I want to show you this. This is um, from their feed, and this just was three hours ago. Sixty new charges has been have been filed against Stephen Stearns by the state attorney's office after the investigation revealed, revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. Read the full news release here. And this is the official press release. Let me know if you guys can see this. I will make it a little bit bigger on the screen. Who are you guys? Let me know in the chat. If you could see this good, press a one. If you're having a hard time, press a two, and I will make it larger. I think this is going to be um, this is going to be the best that I could do for you guys. 60 new charges. Let's see if I can just get it a little. Okay, that's good right there. You guys can see it. Um I wouldn't say there's no proof that he killed her. Um, let me just say, let me highlight this comment. Uh, where did it go? Oh, it went fast. Uh, so somebody said there's no proof that they can't prove that he killed her. I don't believe that that's the truth. I believe that they need beyond a reasonable doubt. They need substantial. It's not just they, they want to make sure they dot their I's and cross their T's, ladies and gentlemen. The the murder charges levied against Stephen Stearns, it, that's coming. Trust me. I'll bet my pension on it. It's coming. We just have to be patient. That's the thing. And most of us lack patience because we want it and we want justice now. But this takes time. So uh, is this a good size for you guys for reading, uh, for reading and viewing? Is this good? Just let me know. You guys can see this good. All right, 60 new charges filed against Stephen Stearns. Uh, the state attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit has filed 60 new criminal charges against Stephen Stearns. Date of birth, 42586. That's 37 years old. The demon associated with the Madeline Soto case. Shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stephen Stearns' phone. The city of Kissimmee uh, Police Department quickly arrested Stearns, who remains in custody in the Oskalia County Department of Corrections on no bond. Rightfully so. At least this is not New York, where you can dismember a body uh, and get out on a no bond with an ankle monitor. Uh, I'll get into that at a later time, but that's a case that's going on here in New York. I know my good friend Melanie Little was covering that. Um, the investigation reveals more images and videos depicting criminal acts. The, 
The Kissimmee Police Department provided this evidence to the state attorney's office, which found cause to file the following charges. Eight additional counts of sexual battery on a child under 12. That means this poor girl, this victim, this tiny little victim, Madeline Soto, was under the age of 12. As we calculated, the Feb- the March 2022 date would put her at 11 years old. And that's why eight counts, folks, eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12. Five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18. This is what is on his devices, and it might not just be his phone. Seven additional counts of lewd and levacious molestation. It just makes me sick to my stomach reading this, guys. It makes me ill. Forty additional counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Ten or more images. This is vile. If there was ever a case where I I would say I wouldn't lose sleep over jailhouse justice, this is one of them. But um, uh, let's go beyond that. Uh, they, They continue to say, we appreciate the efforts of our partners in the state attorney's office in assisting with seeking justice for Madeline. As we, Ed and I always say this, it's justice for the victims. Justice is not for us. It it, it is for us in a sense, but first and foremost, justice is for the victim. And they say it right here in this statement. Justice for the victim, Madeline, says the police chief, Betty Holland. With this being a complex case and many facets of our work is not done, and we are continuing our investigation into the timeline leading up to Madeline's death. To learn more about the Kissimmee Police Department, visit KissimmeePolice.gov. Again, very difficult, guys, very difficult to even listen, to see this, to hear about it. So in in, in my estimation, right now we are looking at Stefan Stearns. Stefan Stearns has 62 counts, 62 charges, 62 counts varying in degree. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the timeline here. I want to just pause this because this is going to give us a little bit of an overview of the timeline of the events that led us to where we are today uh, on March 12th of 2024 case we are following closely and tonight the investigation into the death of a 13 year old central florida girl continues madeline soto's body was found just over a week ago after a days-long multi-county search effort and while no one has been charged in her death yet the prime suspect in the case according to investigators is a man who was supposed to be there to protect her her mother's boyfriend stefan stearns it is a story that has impacted people across Central Florida and the country. And tonight, our Rafael Pierce breaks down where the investigation is at right now and how things unfolded. About two weeks ago, Madeline Soto was supposed to be getting dropped off right here at Hunters Creek Middle School. We're told she never made it. Instead, the story took a disturbing turn. And now investigators are still trying to figure out how she was killed. From a missing teen case to a murder investigation, the story of Madeline Soto has impacted people across the country and left many in Central Florida mourning the tragic loss. It all started Monday, February 26, when Madeline's mother, Jennifer Soto, reported to police that her daughter had gone missing. In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. The next day, Jennifer told our crew her boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, dropped her daughter off at a church near Hunters Creek Middle School where Maddie attended. He told investigators she wanted to walk the rest of the way, but never made it. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. From there, a large search effort got underway. We have well over uh, 100 deputies, detectives, uh, intelligence analysts, let me, I just want to stop this just for a second because uh, my wrench, uh, thank you for the, the, this comment. Remember, this guy has been involved, Stefan Stearns, in their lives for seven. I calculated to be nine years. They got into this from, um, they got into the, the info from that phone 
where is all his old phones? Well, they got married and applied for a marriage certificate in 2015. So in in my calculation, it was not seven years. It is nine years that he's been around Jennifer Soto. So that means that uh, Madeline was a baby, okay, uh, when he came into contact with Jennifer. They got married as per their marriage certificate in 2015. So the prior cell phones and all of his prior carriers and data that can be subpoenaed and they could check tonight or tomorrow i will have a retired nypd computer crimes expert a retired detective who worked in the elite new york city police department's computer crime squad they went after folks just like this who had uh images and videos and things of that nature on their all of their computer devices and, and electronics. He's an expert and he is going to walk us through what and how they do this stuff, not exactly the methods and steps, but how these investigations unfold. And it's going to give us a great insight into how our cyber sleuth detectives in all of the major police departments, including the FBI, and Homeland Security and all of our federal partners who work tirelessly to bring evil monsters like Stefan Stearns to justice. And with the charges that are, that are levied against him at this time, he is never going to see the light of day, even without the charges of murder of Madeline Soto being brought forward to him. With what they have right now seals the deal for him to never, ever get out. But we have to... Re- Go and seek justice for Madeline Soto. We have to, and that will happen. We have well over uh, 100 deputies, detectives, uh, intelligence analysts, and specialized personnel who are investigating this case and searching for Madeline. They applied for the marriage license and they were married in month in a two months. It's on the marriage license. It says when it was applied, and then it, there's an update that they got married a few months later. Alan, uh, right now, several other agencies joined in, and then on Wednesday, a bombshell arrest. Late at night, the Orange County Sheriff announced the arrest of the mother's boyfriend for sexual battery and possession of child sexual abuse material, and named him the prime suspect in the case. Then the sheriff said he believes Stearns never dropped off Madeline in the first place and told us he was captured on camera throwing her backpack and school laptop into a dumpster Monday morning. Deputies say Maddie's body was seen in Stearns' car before he drove away. We believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. Two days later, a major but tragic discovery. Maddie's body was found in a rural area in St. Cloud, several miles away from the family's home in Kissimmee. Since then, her community has been mourning the loss. It was like a, like a, like a hole is missing because everybody at school even, they're like sad. Investi- that even that little small piece there, it is so sad to hear that young little boy talk about Maddie and how they're all sad that they don't see her in school. And don't you know that they're watching the news and listening to the things that are being said and that's alleged the monster uh, Stephen Stearns committed against their classmate? And how sad is it that this has happened? Uh, it affects all of the children and all of the community. Um, and, and, you know, here we are and, and fast forward to today. It is just sad, sad, sad. Um, our children are our future and we have to protect them. And he, again, Madeline Soto, Maddie was failed by the people who are supposed to be protecting her, that being her mother and her extended family. Um, because somebody had to have seen some signs along the way. You can't tell me that nobody saw any signs, that she didn't let out not one blurb or not one little signal. It's just extremely disturbing. It was like a, like a, like a hole is missing because everybody at school even, 
They're like sad. Investigators now also looking at the discrepancies in the mother's statements. After learning there were inconsistencies about the last time she says she saw Maddie. And Kissimmee police say investigators are continuing to dig through evidence against Stearns. As more evidence comes up, there may be more charges in the future. So as of right now, no one has been charged in Madeline's death. But again, the prime suspect is Stefan Stearns, the mom's boyfriend. That's according to investigators. We did reach out to Kissimmee police over the weekend. They told us there is no update as of right now. But sources tell us we could have new information as early as this week. So there you have it, folks. Um, just again, the wheels of justice are spinning right now. The wheels of justice are in motion. and. We have to all be patient. We have to wait because for the police to do their job, to bring the case forward to the prosecutor, they have to button up a lot of things. They got to dot their I's and cross their T's. Now, I quickly, before I went live, went to a law firm in Florida just to look up some of the child pornography laws in the state of Florida. We know Florida is tough on crime. Um you know, ever since the uh, bail reform and the Criminal Justice Reform Act uh, in the wake of 2020 and the incidents that happened during the summer of 2020 and before, we look at um, what happened with criminal justice reform. And a lot of uh, states uh, adopted this soft approach on crime. Florida was one of them that kind of stayed pretty strong. Um, they didn't waver and they didn't, you know, fold into uh, going easy and going soft on crime. So I want to just pull up this. This is just random that I, I did this um, before I went live quickly. So it says Florida's tough laws on child pornography and possession. And this is dated February 9th of 2023, folks, as you can see. Just by a show of hands in the chat, how many can you how many of you can see the the, the lettering, it is small, but let me know by putting a one in the chat if you want me to make this bigger, put a one. If, you, if you're if you good with it, press a two. Just I want to get an idea of, if everybody can see what this is. Um, I'm going to see if I can, in fact, make it a little. Oh, I can. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger just, just, so, just so you guys can see it. Um, one of the most strictly prosecuted criminal charges in Florida is the possession and distribution of child pornography. Can everybody see that first line right here? Um, so on this um, criminal defense law site, it, this article was just written last month, February 9th. It says one of the most strictest prosecuted criminal charges in Florida is the possession and distribution of child pornography. Any crime involving uh, children is taken with extreme care, and once the authorities find evidential proof on a person's digital devices, they will likely try to enforce the harshest penalties. You guys see that? So that's what I'm talking about here, is that Stephen Stearns, let me just make sure, okay, that's that's probably the, the biggest that I can get this. This is the... This is the up close and most personal that I can get this for you. But this ties into what we're talking about and saying that if in the remote chance that God forbid, right? Holly Go Lightly says, I love Sheriff Grady Judd. Yeah, yeah, he, he's awesome. I love his press conferences. And I actually tried to get him to come on the show with me. Uh, and I, I won't give up on that because I would love to get him. I would love to get him on the show. Thank you, ATS News. Yeah, I'm under the weather, man. I, I got an upper respiratory infection, sinus infection, and, and I am, for lack of a better term, I am effed right now. I'm not really feeling good at all. Um, but this is, this is important enough to go live with this. Um, so Dana says, you got to give uh, Ron DeSantis a bit of props. I give him a lot. Forget about a bit of props. No matter where you are on the on the um, on the political spectrum, if you're tough on crime, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I like you. I don't care what what party you are on. If you're tough on crime, I like you, and, and that's it. That that's where I stand. Um, this article will define the possession of Florida's penalties for a person accused of 
possessing child pornography, along with recent possession cases in Florida. Now, I don't want to read all this stuff to you, but what I want you guys to pay attention to is Florida Statute Section 847.00.001, subsection 3. Uh, and that is going to give you child pornography is defined as any image or video which depicts a minor, meaning any person younger than 18 years old, engaging in sexual conduct. Now, again, sexual conduct, they go on to um, describe it. But I'm going to pin this um this website in the description. I'm going to pin this in the description so you guys can all, if you want, go and educate yourself on Florida law as it pertains to sexual um, sexual images, sexual videos that involves a child, child pornography. I want you to go and check this out and educate yourselves if you want to. I'll link it in the description in this video at give me 10 minutes after i'm done <clears throat> give me 10 minutes to link it in the description so this way we all can get um we can all get up to date and up to speed on what he's looking at penalties it goes on to talk about penalties for child pornography in the state of florida i thought that this was a gem to find this because it gives not only me because i'm not a resident of florida i'm not up to date on the, the laws of florida but this tells me as it pertains to Stefan Soto, um, Stefan Stearns, how much, how much of a world of shit he's in right now. And rightfully so. He should be in a world of shit. He shouldn't get out and should never see the light of day. This, is, uh, this person here is a menace to society. He doesn't deserve to be out, doesn't deserve a chance to be out. He doesn't ever deserve to be rehabbed and, and sent out and re-released to the public. We know that. We know that. Now, I want to switch gears for a second. I want to ask you guys, what's your feelings towards Jennifer Soto? We can all draw conclusions, but none of us know what she knew. I had a um, body language expert, Dr. G, explains we saw the behavior panel uh, experts who called out Jennifer Soto and said that she was deceptive. We had Dr. G who said that he didn't think she had any knowledge. He didn't say she, he didn't get, make her out to be an, an angel, but he said that she, he didn't think she had any knowledge. And then we had statement analysis expert, Lieutenant Bob Schaefer, who said he has a lot of explaining to do. And he didn't like her body language. He didn't like the message that she was sending out and we covered it strongly um but at the end of the day it doesn't matter what the experts think and look at what matters is what they have in evidence in hand in front of them what matters is is what jennifer soto said doesn't line up with what she told the police so they have a small a window of opportunity to grab her, put her in the box, as we call it, interview and interrogate her. And then once she says, I don't want to answer any more questions, I want a lawyer, and gets scared and asks for an attorney, all bets are off. And that's what happened, I believe, with Jennifer Soto. She was cornered into the in, in the interview room and being interrogated, and she said, oh, hell no. I can't answer any more questions. You guys caught me. The gig is up. She didn't say that, but she, in her mind, said, I can't say any more because I got caught in a lie. I need an attorney. So she she lawyered up and got an attorney. Uh, Ed Wallace is traveling. I don't know where he is, but he's on his way to a great vacation, and he's here in the chat. We have these 60 new charges, and Ed Wallace is traveling, and here he is in the chat. Uh talking it up with us, hanging out with us. So, Ed, good to see you. Um, I'm going to have Bob Schaefer come on back with us to give us a little bit of his insight, a little more of his insight. But, guys, what do you think of Jennifer uh, Soto? What do you think of the mom? Do you think that she has some explaining to do and that she is got a hand in this? 
or do you think that she was just somebody who was being controlled by uh, Stephen Stearns and she was afraid to say anything or she was that much under his command and control that she just let it happen, let it be? I want to know what your thoughts are. It could be you guys could have many different thoughts, but I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys had to say. All right, let's take a listen one more time to this breaking news story, and this is how it broke three hours ago. Breaking this afternoon, new charges have been filed against Stefan Stearns. He is the lead suspect in the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, whose body was found earlier this month. Meredith McDonough is here to explain that these new charges are not connected to Madeline's murder. Sheldon, not murder, but still, a total of 60 new charges have been filed against Stearns in connection with the death of Madeline Soto, who was found dead after being reported missing. Now, the new charges include eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18 years old, and then seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation and 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Now, shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stefan Stern's phone. He was then arrested on sexual battery charges along with possession of child sexual abuse material. According to officials, further investigation then revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. And this is from where the new charges stem. According to those documents obtained by West 2 News, Stearns was abusing Madeline for nearly two years. Now, Madeline was missing for nearly a week before her body. Now, that two year time frame, uh, the news is reporting based on the phone. But like everyone was saying earlier, what happened before this phone was discovered? Remember, he gave the phone up on his own. He said, you can have my phone. But you know what? On Monday, last Monday, when this all was happening, I accidentally reset my phone back to factory specs, which is bullshit. You can't reset your phone back to factory specs. But he did say that. And he said, um, you can have my phone. I got nothing to hide. It was, it was wiped though by accident. And that was the first red flag that the law enforcement professionals said to themselves, wait a minute. So your, your girlfriend's daughter who you claim you dropped off disappears on the, off the face of the earth and you accidentally reset your phone to factory settings, I might have been born, you know, what do you think? I was born yesterday? So um, they go and get that phone, and now these records that they're referring to back to her uh, it being abused age 11 is based on that phone. But what happened before that? What happened to this poor, precious baby from the very beginning seven to nine years back or whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter whether it was seven or nine years. What matters is it goes back way before 2022. Because do you think that this monster just started becoming a pedophile, freak, pervert, creepy, weirdo, freak of nature in 2022? It just came upon him like, oh, uh, I, I'm gonna, just going to start this now. No. He was like that for a long time. So eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18. This is all evidence from his phone. Seven counts of lewd and levacious molestation. 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance on by a child. 40 different videos or pictures of unlawful possession of depicting a sexual performance by a child. I almost want to throw up reading that. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm very certain that we're all on the same page here. Uh, despicable. It just makes your blood boil that there's so many more of these savage animals, these beasts. You look at, like, To Catch a Predator, uh, that famous show, To Catch a Predator. Um, uh, there's doctors, lawyers, judges, teachers, every walk of life doing this stuff. 
we got to do better. We got to protect our children. We got to fight back against this because these demons walk amongst us. Ladies and gentlemen, this Stefan Stearns, he's not the only one out there. Well, thank God he's not out there now. But what does it take? It takes a child's life to be taken. It takes Madeline Soto to be murdered, to expose this shit. It just gets me, it gets my blood boiling. And I apologize for the profanities. But again, if there was ever a time for profanity, this would be it. And I'm not making excuses, but this gets me going. This gets me going. Ed, where are you? Let me know where you are. And Soto, who was found dead after being reported missing. Now, the new charges include eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18 years old, and then seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation and 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Now, shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stefan Stern's phone. He was then arrested on sexual battery charges along with possession of child sexual abuse material. According to officials, further investigation then revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. And this is from where the new charges stem. According to those documents obtained by West 2 News, Stearns was abusing Madeline for nearly two years. Now, Madeline was missing for nearly a week before her body was found so elizabeth says elizabeth joe collins when are the law when are the law going to charge her low-life mother she's as guilty as this evil son of a bitch again we we had this conversation and and again your 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 sta statement here your sentiment is it rings with all of us we say the same thing but it's not as easy as just pointing the finger and saying she must have known she has to have known it has to be proved. The burden of proof is on the state and the prosecutor, and the prosecutor won't take the case until the investigators can come to them with probable cause to arrest Jennifer Soto, and they need to have that probable cause to make that lawful arrest. And a DA and a district attorney prosecutor, I'm, I'm use an acronym, so I'm trying to spell it out for you. The district attorney is not going to go ahead and sign an arrest warrant unless they have it all there. And if they had it all there, the, she would have been arrested already. So be patient. They're working on it. They got to do it. It's just the same concept as if you have an open heart surgery, would you want to rush that surgeon to do your open heart surgery and get you in and out of the operating room? No. You would say to that surgeon, take your time, do it right, precision, make it, make me better, and let's move on. That's that's what's going on here, folks. That's what we have going on. Now, I wanted to ask quickly, <clears throat> you know, I, I wanted to do a little bit of, uh, you know, questions. I wanted to ask you guys to ask some questions. And hashtag duty Ron in the chat. I'll scan the chat quickly to get your questions. But I wanted to get um, uh, an idea from you. The viewing audience of what do you think charges should be for someone who is like this let's just say for argument's sake he didn't kill uh, madeline soto let's just say he was caught with these the, these images and videos on his phone what would be in your eyes and i'm asking this question just to see what you guys all would say what would it be would it be life in prison in the state of Florida where he lives, or would you like to see this guy put to death, death penalty? Um, in cases like this, I have mixed emotions on it because somebody like this can never be rehabbed. Somebody like this is a danger to society. So I'm just curious what you guys think. Um, you know, Do you think it's life? Do you think it should be a DP case, death penalty case? Do you think that he should be... Um, do a determined time and then be rehabilitated and re-released to society. Now, I mean, I'm given all the options, but I would tell you, I would go for option one and two any day, all day, every day, because this is the face of a demon. The, this guy is, um, I just, I just can't, I can't even look at him anymore. And when I, when I thought about doing this, um, when doing the stream and trying to plan a little bit for it, 
10 minutes before I went live, I said I wanted to just play his video, the, 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 the interview video again. But every time I see this interview video, it just makes me ill. It makes me physically ill when I see him and hear him talk. Um, but I want to scan to see if there's anything uh, additional or new that's out there. So give me a second as I look. Most people are saying DP, death penalty. Ed Wallace says castration first, then the death penalty second. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really, really troubling when you look at this stuff. And um, I, wanna just, I just wanted to see. Um, oh, here's an update. Let me see what you got. I'm going to look at the chat real quick. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has given Super Chats. Emily, good to see you. Feel better soon, Duty Ron. Yeah, I, I mean, I, hopefully, I'll be, hopefully I'll be better real quick. Thank you, Yorkie. Thank you, Emily, for gifting out the memberships. Emily was my very first channel member, so thank you. Rosa, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Mac Randall, member for five, uh, nine months. Good to see you. Thank you, Prem. I appreciate you being a member. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you, uh, Rachel uh, Kopfler. Thank you so much for gifting out that membership. And I'm, I apologize for botching the name. I, I, I can't use those acronyms. I'm, I'm using it. I apologize if it offends you, but we're using it here. Um, Joey Brooklyn, thank you. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers, Best True Crime community. We appreciate all the hard work that you do, Joey Brooklyn. Uh, Charlene, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. Barbara, George, thank you for your excellent coverage on this case. Thank you for being here. Nana Lovely, thank you for that super chat. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent uh, super chat, excellent message. Thank you, Rian the Diva. Uh, always great to see you, and thank you for being here. Um, so let's take a peek at the chat. I'm going to go back again because I got yelled at for asking you guys for to send questions and then not see the questions. A lot of people saying death penalty at duty, Ron. Get well soon, and thank you. Yes, death penalty, Wanda. Yeah, I just woke up with this, so I'm I'm hoping that it, it I'm hoping that it goes away soon. So. And I'm hoping my good friend Ed Wallace and his wife don't get it. Um, so I don't know when I contracted this, but I'm not feeling my best. Uh, that's for sure. All right. Um, let me just take a look at one other thing. I think Vinnie Politan went live on his YouTube channel. Did anybody see that? Let's um, listen to what Vinnie has to say. Huge headline. Um, Vinnie Politan from Court TV has his own YouTube channel. It changes the game. I'm it changed the game big time Let's uh, for to Stephen Stearns. You know, we're, we're not even at the point where any of these charges are related to the death of Madeline Soto. Yeah. That is still to come. Exactly. That investigation is continuing. This is about what happened to Madeline and what she had to endure, um, suffer through prior to her life being taken. Remember, she was only 13. Who likes Vinnie Politan here? I freaking love him. I think he has got a lot of passion. I think he's really brings, he brings his heart and soul into, like some people feel like he doesn't. I feel he does. Uh, let me know if you like Vinnie Paul. I love Vinnie Politan. I think he is passionate about getting the message out. And sometimes he really, really shows it big time. Uh, I'm, I'm a subscriber. I'm a subscriber of his YouTube channel. I'll link it here in the description. But let me know what you think of Vinny um, as a journalist, as someone bringing you these true crime stories. And now he has his own YouTube channel. Eight years old. Um, it, it is incredibly tragic. Incredibly <laughs> tragic. S.L. S. Connell. What and happens nice to this young girl. And the more we're learning, the more um, <laughs> maddening, the more... Um, Heartbreaking it is. I didn't hear this, so I want uh, to hear what he has to say. Details that are coming out, but you're just joining us, folks. The headline, 60, 6 new charges filed against Stefan Stearns. Uh, I'm going to go through them in just, a, in just a second and then talk about how this impacts everything else in this case. Everything else will be impacted 
um, by this and the number of, of charges. And these charges you're looking at now in Florida, in the state of Florida, because of her age, uh, subject you to a potential uh, death sentence. So, um, wow. Let's put this up. You can hear it in his voice. He, This is disturbing okay. to him, and so, rightfully so. These charges, let me go through it. Eight counts of sexual battery on a child under 12. Under 12. That number is significant because of the laws down in the state of Florida and the penalties and the punishment when you do this to someone who is under the age of 12. Five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18. So now you're seeing that it began before she was 12 and it continued. So this conduct I agree. is ongoing conduct. Um, seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation. Um, he will not be out. So that gives you 20, was that 20 counts right there? And then 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Just Joe, I agree. Uh, 10 or more images. Raises question. Now, I wanted to tell you, you know, you heard what Vinny said, that the, these charges are really serious and the state of Florida doesn't F around with these. You know, Vinny can't really curse on his YouTube channel because he's affiliated with Court TV. Um, but we can curse here. And these are really serious charges. And and um, Stefan Stearns is fucked. He's not ever going to get out and see the light of day. Just with these charges alone, he is facing you know, life in, in prison and possibly the death penalty uh, as it pertains to the, the state of Florida and their, their strict rules and laws as it pertains to child pornography and child sex crimes. It raises a lot of questions here. Uh, specifically, um, the questions that, it, that it's raising. I'm watching the chat, guys. I'm watching. How long was this going on? How often was this happening and why was it happening? Was it just the sickness of, of, of the suspect in this case? Was she being trafficked? Were these images being sold? Hmm. Were they being shared? If they were being sold or shared, and, and again, this is the first time I'm listening to Vinny's uh, stream because he went live right before I did. So I, I couldn't watch Vinny when he was live, but if if these images were being sold and she was being trafficked, we would see that in these 60 charges. There would there was no charges that referenced child sex trafficking or sale of child pornography um, to the defendant right now. now. I'm not saying that that can't be upgraded, but I'm talking sensibly to you guys and um, and from a law enforcement standpoint and working with district attorneys for two decades, we don't, we, there's nothing indicating that that's uh, in, in, in these new charges, we, nothing. So, but let's listen to what else he has to say. And um, obviously it always. How long was this going on? How often was this happening? And why was it happening? Was it just the sickness of, of, of the suspect in this case? Was she being trafficked? Were these images being sold? I don't think so. Were they being shared? And um, obviously it always comes back to what did mom know? What did mom know? Now, she hasn't been charged in anything. So my guess is whatever information that they're gathering from the phone and the continuation of the of the investigation has not implicated the mother. Let me read for you what, what Kissimmee PD is saying today. The state attorney's office and the Ninth Judicial Circuit has filed 60 new criminal charges against Stephen Stearns, the man associated with the Madeline Soto case. All right, I, I read this to you guys just before we put this on. I read what he's reading, so I'm going to stop it for a second. Detective Wisdom says, at duty, Ron, do you think Stearns abused other children? Ed and I said it on two previous videos, 100%. This is not his first victim. I would say 100% there are more victims of this monster out there. He wasn't just homing in on uh, Maddie Soto. He was not just homing in on her because these are demented sexual predators. He's a sexual 
predator, pedophile. They have an insatiable appetite for this type of gross behavior. And anybody and everybody that he came into contact with, I'm going to include every person that was at that birthday party and that celebration. They all need to be brought in, which I'm sure they have been interviewed, interrogated, and or interrogated. And all of his contacts out in in that in in within that family and expanding beyond every girlfriend, every past girlfriend, every contact that he's ever had, every person he's ever dated, all of the people in that household, they all need to be checked and looked at and questioned. And he worked for Disney, which was a really crazy, scary thing. Shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on his phone. We remember that. Those were the initial charges, stuff that was found on his phone. Well, the city of Kissimmee Kimmy. PD quickly arrested Stearns, who remains in custody with no bond. So he's not getting out. He's locked up. He's not going anywhere. The investigation revealed more images and videos depicting these criminal acts. Uh, the Kissimmee PD provided this evidence to the state attorney's office, who found cause to file the following charges. So it is the state attorney's office that's filed these charges. Yes. I misspoke before. I thought the stuff had just been referred to them, uh, but they were uh, here uh, as part of it. Here's from the uh, chief of police. We appreciate the efforts of our partners in the state attorney's office and assisting in seeking justice for Madeline. With this being a complex case with many facets, our work is not done here, and we're continuing our investigation into the timeline leading up to Madeline's death. Okay, so they're still they're still digging for information, right? And ultimately, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and let me know what you think in the chat. Let me know yes or no if you you agree with me in the chat. Disney has a really bad track record with some of the people they hire. I don't need to go any further, folks, but Disney has a really bad track record of hiring these sexual predators why what the f is going on with disney are you with me yes or no are you i i mean i know you 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 the people here my friends my part of my community the part of true crime even if you're not a part of this community and you're watching this on a replay why why is it that we that disney's all uh, gets a free pass every time you see the meat all being hauled in what in the what in the god's name is going on with disney <sighs> someone's going to be charged for what happened to this little girl uh, her death but right now stefan stern is being charged for what happened before she died this young girl um suffering in life and then uh, you know in death as well Okay, uh, we've got a lot of viewers today. You hear the size. Want to check Vinny. in with Alyssa? We've got Adele. You, you hear the size yeah. coming in from Vinny? Did you hear that deep breath? Of, <sighs> it's just enough Alyssa to make you really want to throw up. This love, laughter is with us. Strangers we live with. Yeah, he had uh, no record. Cat right? lady, cat lady, of course, is here. He, here's a great Michelle. comment right here. Michelle G. Thank you, Teresa. Um, he had bubble. no record. But some of the Lisa most Bubble. vicious uh, crime uh, criminals that commit crimes um, have no Bonnie record. in the house. Great to see you, so Bonnie. This, to me, says, uh, what has he been Dylan up to? Or he, dying. I'm sorry. he just hasn't been caught. What has he been up to all this time? He just never got caught. And I want to go back to the birthday party because Lieutenant Bob Schaefer, our good friend, Lieutenant Bob Schaefer, who did the statement analysis, when we had him on, uh, last week, I believe it was Wednesday, a week to come tomorrow. It was last Wednesday. Um, we had Lieutenant Bob Schaefer on, and you know what he said in the statement analysis? The birthday party has everything to do with what happened to Madeline Soto. And he knows nothing, he knew nothing about this case, but he told me, and he said this to me and Ed, that, that something happened at that birthday party, whether it was Madeline. Maddie saying, this is it. I'm telling aunts, uncles, I'm exposing you. Or something, something occurred at that birthday party that made him kill her. Because as we heard from the police 
sheriff, the police executive, male and female, both from one from Orange County, the other one from Kissimmee, they said that she never made it to the morning when the mom, Jennifer Soto, said, I saw her getting dressed at eight o'clock and I kissed her goodbye. No, her laptop and backpack were dumped at 725 in the morning in the dumpster. So she was dead overnight. Did he carry her out of that house? Did he put her in a, a blanket, wrap her up, and put her in the back of the car? What did he do? Something happened that night. And Lieutenant Bob Schaefer, who knew nothing about this case, said it all revolves around what happened at that birthday party. So the interviews of everybody, remember Jennifer Soto saying, my whole family was there, but I had to work. My whole family was there, but I had to work. Distancing herself from that crime that happened against her daughter, that murder, she conveniently puts in her story, I had to work. I couldn't get the day off for my daughter's turning 13. You turning a teenager from 12 to 13 is a big deal. Whether you're a boy or a girl, when you turn a teenager, if you're a caring parent, mother or father, I don't care what your work schedule is, you know when that's going to happen. You have vacation time. You put in for it a year in advance, if need be, and you take off. And I see all the people saying, some people don't have that, uh, afford that option. Some people, don't. it appears that she was, aff she was afforded that option. If you know that there's a, a significant event happening, meaning your child turning a teenager, you could be there. And it's just so convenient that Jennifer Soto had to work and wasn't there. And then told the police that I watched my daughter get dressed for school Monday morning and kissed her goodbye. That never happened. Is with us as well. Everyone checking in. Can't get to everyone. I mean, the triple in size in one week. I mean, I didn't do much on, on YouTube. And then we started getting 60 new charges filed against Stefan Stearns. 60 new charges, but none of them related to her death. So that investigation is continuing. What they're doing is they're putting together the time. The daughter's birthday was during the week, I think, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Don't, don't hold me to it. But her, the Madeline's birthday was during the week. I believe it was Wednesday. And they decided to have it Sunday at grandma's house or outside of the house. And by Jennifer's own admission, my entire family was there. So all of those family members have to be interviewed and interrogated. It doesn't matter what time she worked till. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, I, Kate says, Duty Ron, if Jen worked until 10, what time did the party finish? I mean, if they're having a party on a Sunday night, they're school the next day. I would hope that the party didn't go on till midnight. What time did the party finish? Did her drive? Did she drive her home after that party? These are all questions that the police know. We don't know, but the police know. I'm starting to think that there was there was something else going on. Did you? Um, did he know that Santa guy? I, I don't know, and that's not up. That's not up for, to us to figure out. It's up to the police to figure out the investigators. But thank you for that question. Thank you. Timeline of everything that happened prior to February 26th, right? So you've got to fill in all the blanks. You've got to figure out who was where, who was saying what to whom, um, what does the, the, the information from the phone say? Uh, what do the text messages say? What do people in the area, uh, neighbors, friends, family, people that were at the birthday party, what are they saying about what was going on? In the meantime, the stuff that they are digging up, the digital footprint left by Stefan Stearns and his complete um, illness and, and depravity in what he was subjecting this uh, girl to uh, from the age, from the minimum of age 11, it's under the age of 12. So we don't know how far back it goes, but from age 11, age 12, and then we know she just made it to 13 on the 22nd. Um, so these 60 charges, 
um, include 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials uh, depicting sexual performance by a child. Okay, this is uh, kitty porn. It's kitty porn. And, and and the question the question right now is what 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 was the motivation behind finding this? Was it just his for his own personal gratification, or was there more to this? Is this stuff being shared? Is this stuff being sold? Was she being trafficked? There's a lot more that Kissimmee PD, um, I'm sure, is going to be uncovering in, in the days to come. Anita is with us, uh, Doodle Mom, uh, Front Range Mama from the Front Range, right, for, for a sex crime for a child. Really take effect, right? The new law that was passed provides a potential for the ultimate uh, penalty, right, for, penalty. for a sex crime for a child, right? You go to the chamber. You go to the chamber. Uh, it's just on these charges. So Vinny is referring to the little the, the research that I did with you guys before this. I put up that attorney's website in that in the if you scroll down further in that attorney's website from Florida, it talks about the death penalty for these charges. Uh, it was the reason I asked you guys what you thought of it. I knew it was there, but I'm linking it here in the description. So Vinny Vinny talks about it, which was it's good that he did that. If he's convicted, he's going nowhere. He's locked up for the rest of his life. But there's also, because of the age of the victim, under Florida, 12, new law, new law. Under the one 12. question I don't know is, does it does the new law retroactively take effect, right? The new law that was passed provides a potential for the ultimate uh, penalty, right? For, for a sex crime for a child, right? You go to the chamber. You go to the chamber. Um, if the victim is a child, as Madeline is in, in this case. So the law was passed. Camo Girl, thank you for this. Hashtag duty run. I'm a domestic violence survivor. And and let me put myself full screen real quick. Shout out to uh, everyone who is brave enough to come forward and talk about, because we have many victims of domestic violence and sexual assault uh, past you know, sexual assault from when they were children, and now they're in their 60s, 70s. 50s, 60s, 70s, 30s, 40s, 50s. You guys are the silent heroes because for you to come forward in a, in a live chat or in the comment section or here by my website or emailing me, I want to say thank you. I want to say I'm sorry for what you went through. I want to say that we need to do better as a society. And for all of you who suffered and continue to suffer, it's a lifelong suffering that you're going through. I tip my caps to you guys, and I send love, strength, and all the positive vibes and the best that I can give to you for support. So kudos to all of you. I love and respect you tremendously for coming forward and saying that and sharing your story because we have to shout this from the rooftops sometimes. And for you guys to come on here onto these larger platforms and do that, it takes bravery. It takes guts. It takes strength. And I tip my cap to you. You guys are the silent sentinels. So thank you. Asked after the conduct. So that's the one thing I don't know. And this is, you know, we're getting into the minutia of law, but that's why I'm here for you folks. Um, how will that be interpreted? Is this law retroactively effective? Um, it's tough. It's tough to subject someone to a law at the time of the conduct if the law is not passed until afterwards. So by the time the law is passed, she is already past the age that would subject him to the ultimate punishment for these crimes. So my gut is telling me it may not be eligible. And if it is eligible, it will be an issue that will be litigated. Trust me, it will be litigated um, uh, by the defense in this if they go for the ultimate um, punishment for these sex crimes. In the meantime, the investigation into the um, the death of little Madeline continues. Uh, that continues. And, and Kathemi PD say we're, we're putting together the timeline of everything that happened up until that point, right? So they, they know where they found her and then they've got to move. They're moving backwards from there to figure out how did she get there? How exactly did she get there? What was going on? Who was involved? Uh, and when did it all happen? And all of that has to be done by the detectives. So what Vinny is saying here is very accurate. 
But all of that has to be done by the hard work of the male and female detectives who are working this case night and day. This is a priority. This is priority number one in Kissimmee. These detectives and the state and federal and all of the all of the agencies that are helping enhance this investigation are working on this night and day. And I want to just say this to you. If you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. Here you will have a safe community where you can express your thoughts and opinions without being attacked. If we see you being attacked and in the comment section and things of that nature, we'll get to it. We may not get it right away, but our mods are some of the best out there. So if you're not yet subscribed, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it onto your social media platform, and let's put our victims first. The victims are always first, and the surviving families, the good surviving families, not talking about the families who are involved in these heinous crimes. I'm talking about the victims and the families of the loved ones, the people who love and care for the victims here. So again, thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of this live stream. I just want to just add one or two things here. Um, we need to be patient. We, we, we want answers. We want to know, is the mom, is she involved in this? Is she a part of this? Yes, we want to know this. But at the end of the day, we want justice to be brought forward. And for justice to be brought forward, we can't have a sloppy investigation. We can't have somebody um, arrested that we can't prove what happened to them. You know, we can't prove what um, I'm, I'm saying. We can't prove what they did and what they perpetrated to our small victim here, our tiny victim, Madeline Soto, who just turned 13. And, and, and again, this is what it's about here. She is the victim, Madeline Soto, age 13. Um, fell victim to mom, the boyfriend of the mother. We can't refer to him as a stepfather. He was not a stepfather. He was nothing close. This guy was a pedophile demon. The, she, Jennifer Soto referred to him as the stepfather. Shame on her. Now we can say, and we can argue that she didn't know about this, but none of us know definitively. We don't know if she did know if she had an uh, inkling, if she had some clues, if she just chose to ignore it. I, you know how many stories I've heard in the past two weeks, in the past probably 10 years, from people who said, my mom knew that my stepfather or my father was molesting me and she didn't do anything about it. My dad knew that this was happening and I was being sexually molested by my mom and he did nothing. You know how many of those stories I heard, I hear, and I continue to hear? So maybe that is the case here. We don't know. But at the end of the day, 60 additional charges are brought forward on Stefan Stearns. This is the beginning of more to come. We are going to hear more. This is not the end of it. We're going to hear more, and we're going to continue to follow this. At this time, I got nothing more to give to you guys, and I want you to know that I'm thankful that you're here and thankful that you're a part of this community, and I want you to know that we care about you. So if you need to reach out to us, dutyron.com, all social media, one word, dutyron. You can message me or Ed Wallace on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Um, no Snapchat, just Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and um, yeah, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and that's all of our socials. I want to thank you all for joining, and I'm going to end with this photo, full screen, Madeline Soto. May she continue to rest in peace. She has no more pain, no more suffering, no more torture for this poor young girl. May she continue to rest in peace in the lap of the Lord. And I want to say thank you to all of you for being here. And thank you for being kind. Thank you for understanding. This is not easy to do. It's not easy for all of us. So let's hug your loved ones. 
cherish the moments you have, and keep your eyes open. You see something, say something. Please, for the love of God, we got to protect our vulnerable. Peace and love in Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. Thank you for joining. God bless.